Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video um, on a question I get all the time and have gotten this question for years and years and years and it's about automotive batteries and automotive battery testers. Now there's really three main types of uh, battery testers that individuals, mechanics, shops use to test automotive batteries. I'm talking about uh, any automotive battery that you can find um, powering a car or truck, um, even motorcycles, the flooded lead acid batteries. Uh, this also applies to the gel cell batteries, the AGM, which are absorbed glass mat. But there's three types of testers. Now the one tester that's probably older than all of them is called a carbon pile tester or just a load tester. This tester is what a lot of the old school mechanics have in their toolboxes. Uh, I'm going to try to find a pick. I don't have one handy to show you. Uh, basically what this tester does is it puts a, a very large load across the battery and there's usually either a digital readout or a lot of the old ones just had a swing gauge on it and would tell you the condition of the battery based on how it handles the load. The second type of tester which is called a uh, digital voltmeter which is what most people have in their toolbox if they're have any sort of mechanical inclination at all and it does a whole range of things but one of the for our purposes one of the things that it does is you can test the voltage of a battery now the voltage of a of a 12 volt battery and that's what I'm going to be talking about the rest of this video is a little bit misunderstood when you have a fully charged battery at 80 degrees temperature the voltage should read around 12.6 12.65 volts not 12 volts uh, as the temperature increases, the voltage will increase a little bit for a fully charged battery. Consequently, if it decreases, it will also drop. So if you're testing your battery and it's only got 12.4 volts, uh, but it's 30 degrees outside, then you may want to try to look up on the internet to find a uh, volt and temperature chart that shows you where a fully charged battery should be at a specific temperature but we're going to assume that we're testing under ideal conditions um, so 12.6 volts around there plus or minus half a volt or so is about where you want your battery to be the problem is most people will if they're having uh, starting issues their battery's not holding a charge a lot of times they'll take their volt meter test it and it'll come out say 12.6 volts and they're like well the battery's fine um, you know it must be something else but that's not the case checking the voltage on a battery does not tell you um, that the internal construction i.e. the plates that are in most of the most flood lead acid batteries have uh, plates in each of the cells positive and negative they're made out of lead or a lead alloy and these will get sulfation over time it's basically a scale coating that just as part of the chemistry of a battery will start to accumulate kind of like the clogging of an artery inside a human body so what happens is when this sulfation gets on the plates it will not allow the battery to fully charge so let's say a battery would hold 800 cranking amps but fully charged because of its plate sulfation it may only hold 680 cranking amps that's just an example so Testing the voltage of a battery does not tell you the internal condition of a battery. Now there's a third tester that's the newest tester out there, which is called a conductance tester. And what a conductance tester does is it does test for voltage, but it tests the resistance across the plates inside the battery. Now these work on the flooded lead acid battery, which is the most common battery. It also works on the absorbed glass mats, the gel cell, all the other batteries that I've mentioned. Now this doesn't work on things like camera batteries and carbon pile batteries and things like that. But the conductance tester for the automotive um, world will allow you to understand what's going inside the battery. So the most important reading on a conductance tester, I'm going to show you two of the testers on a battery that I have here. But the most important reading is called the milliohms. The lower the milliohms of resistance, the better condition the battery is. If you went to the auto parts store and picked up a brand new battery, 
that was truly new, not one that's been sitting on the shelf for a year, but let's say it's only a couple months old, and you use a conductance tester, then it should read about two and a half to three ohms at the most. A battery that's starting to go bad, starting to have plate sulfation, it's starting to, you may even see um, some performance issues with it. Your uh, car's not starting as easy as it should, especially when it's cold, uh, it's not holding a charge, you're having to jump it off, things like that, then if you did a conductance tester on that battery, you would probably see ohms rating 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Typically, I get rid of batteries when they're above 7 ohms. Now, I have a weird situation here. Uh, I've got a battery that is in a brand new car. Uh, the car that's behind me is a 2015 Honda Accord. It was built in January of 2015. That's the car's build date. It's uh, the end of February, or close to it, 2015. So the car is only about a month old. But how long the battery sat in Honda's inventory, I have no idea. Um, the problem is that I just, on a whim, decided to hook my conductance tester up to the battery, and I got 7.5 milliohms of resistance. Now, this is not good. This doesn't mean the battery is about to fail. It means that I need to keep an eye on it. The battery is under Honda's three-year 36,000 mile warranty, so no, I'm not going to change it. Um, what I am going to do, and what you can try, especially if you've got a battery that you just bought from the auto parts store, it's, it's brand new, is to run a desulfator on it. Now, I've ran a desulfator on this battery for about four days, and it's already dropped down to around five ohms, which is good. So what that's telling me is that this battery sat around either in Honda's inventory or the battery manufacturer's inventory for quite some time before it was actually used um, on production. Now, the, the funny thing about this is if you look at it with your volt ohm meter, it's fine. So uh, I'm not having any performance problems that anybody would notice. Uh, these, Hon these Hondas are typically very easy to turn over. That's why they have a, what people call a lawnmower battery on them. They're very, very small batteries. They don't require... The engine does not require a lot of uh, torque to turn for the starter to turn it over, so it doesn't need a lot of amperage. But I do need to be aware that the battery is not as healthy as it should be. If I went to the, uh, to the auto parts store and bought the equivalent for this, it's probably going to read around 2 or 3 ohms, which is where it should read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what a conductance tester in real time actually looks like and I'm going to show you a volt ohm meter. Um, again, I don't have a, I have a carbon pile or a load tester for the battery, um, but don't have it handy. So let me show you what the testers look like. Okay, guys, this is the uh, battery that we're going to be testing that I just told you about. And I'm going to be using a digital voltmeter. This is a, uh, happens to be a Craftsman brand. I have had this for a long time. You can find these at auto parts stores, uh, Sears, almost anywhere now. They're about, you can find them for $20 to $50. And I'm going to set it on the scale that we're going to use, make sure it's on DC. And I'm going to test this battery by touching the two terminals. And let me see if I can get this where the camera will pick it up. This is showing that we have 12.6, yeah, about 12.68 volts. That's, uh, that's a healthy battery. It's probably about, I don't know, 60 degrees in here. I had this, as I said earlier, I had this battery on the uh, desulfator, which also gives it a slight trickle charge. Uh, this battery is a is just a little bit higher than it should be. Remember, I told you it should be around 12.6, 12.65 or so, around 80 degrees, and it's cooler than that. So um, it is charged a little higher, but that is that's okay. So this is the uh, conductance tester. There's a lot of these on the market, and uh, basically what you do is you hook the uh, clamps up to the corresponding terminals on the battery. I'm going to have to hold this one. Then you turn it on.
All right, if it beeps like that, it means it's not hooked up properly. It's not got a good connection. Okay, it runs through a uh, self-diagnostics test. Now it's asking me to choose the uh, cold cranking amps, and this doesn't really matter at this point, so I'm just going to hit OK. It's going to start the test. Now it's telling me that I have the most important figure here is 5.58 milliohms of resistance. Now for a uh, a brand new battery, this is uh, it's not good. It's also got 474 cold cranking amps. So I am not going to see any type of a performance degradation from a starting perspective um, with the way that the um, with 474 cranking amps. But what I don't like is the milliohms at at 5.58. Uh, now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to use my battery sulfator on this battery um, to see if I can't get that milliohms down more towards three. If I can get it around there, then that will pretty much tell me that the plate sulfation has nearly been eliminated, which there shouldn't be much on here for a battery that's um, supposedly new uh, and I say new again you know this battery could have been on the uh, inventory of the battery manufacturer or Honda's inventory for a while but uh, needless to say of course it, it's under three year 36,000 mile warranty so I am not worried about that at all but it's something good to keep an eye on um, battery sulfators you can find them all over the place the one that I use is the battery tender junior and um, it's a trickle charger that has a computer circuit board in it that will not overcharge the battery. It will shut down when the battery reaches a, a specified charge and it will also pulse the charge to uh, get rid of the sulfate on the plates. So I hope this, <coughs> excuse me, I hope that this video has given you a little bit better insight on battery testers. Okay, this is always a good thing to have in your toolbox, the digital, digital voltmeter. But if you're having problems with your battery or you want to check the resistance, then the conductance tester is what you need. And ironically, when I went to buy two batteries for one of my diesel trucks that requires dual batteries, I took this with me. The auto parts guys didn't even know about these. Um, they had three batteries. I tested all three of them. One of them was actually really high on resistance, so I chose the two that had the lowest resistance to purchase. So he was very impressed with this. Uh, even the battery store test testers and chargers that they have, those are more carbon pile load testers. Um, they do not uh, typically test, do a conductance test. So if you guys would like to have any other suggestions on maintenance items, any type of automotive theory, or whatever it is that you can think of automotive related, leave a comment down in the box and I'll try to do a video on it. Thank you.